I feel like for me, uh, comfort games um, are... It's when I sit down and, like, I'm playing the game and I go, wow, this is really comforting. <laughs> Astute observation. <laughs> Welcome to the Glasshouse Game Show recorded in London at Glasshouse Brick Lane. I'm Shay and today in the studio I'm joined by Alex P and Hello. Matt. And then remote we have Alex CG and Astrid. Hello. Hello. Oi oi. Love that. Today we're going to be talking about comforting games and holiday gaming traditions because it's what? Christmas time holidays. <laughs> and various insert holiday here festive holidays. Yeah. <laughs> it's the time of the red yeah. and the green and the white. <laughs> I don't uh, celebrate any holidays. I just hibernate. <laughs> Festivus, you got Festivus for the rest of us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the family's here. We're gathered round to spread some. We would hold hands, just, but just non, just still generic, COVID. generic cheer, <laughs> generic holiday yeah. cheer. This is the problem with modern oh, that society is that we got to warn the holidays, right? We got to bring the holidays back is what, what I'm always saying. <laughs> oh and the God. way we do that is through video games. They wouldn't just, they wouldn't say holidays. Yeah, Someone I know. Well, said I, that Cause I'm not it. actually that person, <laughs> you know, that's the whole point. <laughs> it's a character you on a character. You fake it. Let's <laughs> kick with the program. So meta. Um, basically, this was prompted by my being in an advert for a popular gaming company, <laughs> name redacted. Um, and basically my brother and I were bantering like the scamps we are <laughs> and um basically it turns out that when he went f- like when he went off to uni like years and years ago he was really good at ssx3 and mario kart double dash and i could never beat him so i just spent months and i mean months would he do the whole mountain like he the, would yeah like, on, yeah that's my favorite thing to do that's i would so i would regularly spend just a half hour going down from the top yeah. of the mountain how long is that is that a literal half hour? Yeah, yeah, li- yeah literally. Um, mm-hmm. I just realized that you said it's half an yeah. hour. <laughs> How long? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can cut it short if you're really good, but <laughs> it's just, it, it was a vibe. I mean, the yeah. whole, the theme of this episode is like winter based traditions. Mm-hmm. And I feel like breaking out a PS2 and just like yeah. skating down the hill, being Allegra. Which is the best yeah. SSX? Three. Three. Damn. Yeah, without a doubt. Oh, we're I just going to cut off two. Tricky like that? It's good, but like the best part of it is hearing that sample of that song <laughs> and it's in SSX3 still. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and it's like, you know, SSX Tricky is cute. SSX3 is gorgeous. Gorgeous next to cute. Yeah. Going to devour it every yeah. single time. Fuck also Mary Junkie Kill. XL on that soundtrack. Oh, Please. incredible. Yeah, like a really, really good soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> that was the time when you would get an EA game and they would actually like, it would be a mark of quality, mm-hmm. the, the soundtrack. Yeah. From, um, was, was SSX games the birth of ea sports maybe i think oh, we, i don't think they had it was the EA sports big, big was yeah. There, yeah oh yeah yeah that's true is that still around no EA, so b- did big become ea sports i think the idea of big was it was the more um <laughs> more like arcade focused stuff mm-hmm. so like fifa okay. street and stuff like that which yeah, I, yeah. I maintain is a better game than it got credit for like i i would rather play a game of fifa street than most most anything i was sure. going to say than fifa well, but it's actually, just like the it's nba streets games mm-hmm. yeah, well. yeah yeah those were good you could play as a yeti i'm like <laughs> duncan i'm like five years old so i have no oh. cultural sort of uh framework for, for any of this ssx sounds like someone like just it's like a dating profile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like ssx yeah. what is this a typo <laughs> <laughs> oh. your keyboard was broken like <laughs> So was what, Ready to Rumble Boxing also EA did? I think that's not an that EA property. That was on the Dreamcast. No? It was also on 64 and and it was all, it was cross cross contaminated. <laughs> but it wasn't <laughs> one of those properties. Sure. Is where I was going with that. Yeah, it was a question. It was just a question. <laughs> I don't think I ever played Ready to Rumble, but were there um were there steroids in it? Was that like just oh, like out and out a thing that you actually, could do? I think so. Yeah. But I don't. I think they were Fucking just called what? like. Yeah, I don't think they were explicitly called steroids. I mm-hmm. mean, it was probably just like you know, performance enhancing drugs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was in everything but name. It was like little pills that you can take. That yeah, there was a lot of 
Uh, yeah, there was like probably the pills that mm-hmm. were like the Doctor Mario pills with the <laughs> like red and blue <laughs> different caps and stuff. Which wow. is the really uh, racist one? There's a lot of training. In- is it that one? <laughs> Jesus, oh, no, there's a really fighting one. game that is like really extremely racist. What is it? Whereas like everyone you play is like an I extreme street stereotype. fighter. Well, I mean, like, yes, that's that is true actually, but I mean in a even more caricatured way, where it's like, at least not at least in Street Fighter, they, I think they thought they weren't being racist. In this one, I'm thinking of, they absolutely knew they were being racist and they thought it was funny, and I thought it was something like Ready to Rumble or something. So this episode isn't about Yay Big. <laughs> it's about the fact that I spent so long getting good at those bloody video games. And when he came back, he was genuinely surprised that I could be good at a video game. Um, and I won a lot. And How was recently really was this? Oh, this was ages ago. Okay. Um, like 2011, maybe? Played on yeah. Psyche even. Like, I'm supposed to be better than this. <laughs> yeah. How is she beating me? And they just drove him further into the ground. Literally. Was it just um, SSX so or yeah, was it other was games? Good. So SSX3 and uh, Mario Kart Double Dash specifically, um, and then Melee as well. I spent a lot of time doing that. I'm just um, going to throw this out it there. Good, it was a good summer. Having played you in Melee, I think I could beat your brother. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm Go just going to put that out there. <laughs> wow. Not Melee, but having played you in Ultimate. And this... I was about to get. I mean, so you could you could be you could be her brother at melee, but I feel like Nintendo yeah, might exactly. have a SWAT team around to just sort of like <laughs> spare you. No, I I I'm curious, um, and I want to play your. I want to challenge them. So that shade taken and moving on from that. <laughs> so, uh, what's your brother doing these days? Can we, can we get them on for a get like, game it in. <laughs> Nobody's just realized this is our holiday show. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be good to have special guests. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the whole point, isn't it? Is to sort of see, do you guys have any like rivalries with your siblings? Do you, you know, take up the mantle again? Mine Christmas. rightfully don't play video games. They got better stuff going on. My, my sister goes to Oxford. Oh. Like, <laughs> you know, they don't play games I was telling somebody that the other day. Yeah, they don't. They don't have them. I was telling somebody that the other day and I've like, I've got a very limited amount of time where I can tell people that and then I'll just be the guy that's like yeah my sister's really cool like just I've made no achievements of my own so I'm just like banking on the like (laughs) don't Oxford and Cambridge have that yearly rivalry where they're all playing sorry Cambridge (laughs) where they're all playing video games on that river yeah exactly the, Ox- <laughs> the Oxford and Cambridge, yeah, <laughs> wave race. <laughs> they all they get together. They play wave race sixty four. Wave race sixty four. Wave race though. I was going to say, good, great game that holds up to this yeah, day. Yeah, yes. you can play it in three D now. I think. Sorry, <laughs> you can play it in VR. You can play an N sixty four game in three D. Okay, <laughs> can you do it in Cambridge? <laughs> Oh, that's that's a video that we should actually do. <laughs> like, we should get somebody that's on the yeah. Oxford boat race team and the Cambridge boat race team, and then we should get them to do wave race yeah. against each other. Let's not beyond our abilities. So, we'll, put, we'll mark that in for the calendar next year. To answer your actual question, Shay, um, it, I have the inverse of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, not a rivalry of within video games, um, but especially around not as, not necessarily the holidays. Though it did happen around then, also just like when we had. A lot of time off of school um we would my older sister and i we would play the um the like final fantasy 7 through 9 games where she didn't really want to uh to play them but she was kind of a like pre-weeb weeb kind of mm-hmm. kind of uh person and was really into you know the those, that kind of style that's in hair. those in those yeah, yeah in those final fantasy games and she would basically have the like the prima strategy guide <laughs> like reading up on everything and and kind of talking me through it and it was a little bit like i guess you'd imagine if you were just like binging a show that mm. you were both really obsessed with with yeah. your sibling and it's probably the most we've ever bonded uh, Aww. Thanks, and it is a nice that's a really sweet yeah that's a really sweet thing um uh, uh my brother is better at guitar hero than me than me and he can get fucked um <laughs> i was gonna say that so... must hurt so much to <laughs> him <laughs> it's the worst thing it's the worst thing ever that's the rivalry i have whenever i go back uh back home for the holidays or even just like for a weekend here or there um i always just like try and fail to beat him <laughs> at guitar hero 
and I never do it because um, he's a better gamer than me, apparently. Um, Pastor, I have this mental picture in my head of you having like seven different guitar hero plastic guitars that you've all like hung up on, <laughs> on wall <laughs> someday on wall I'll be mounts. <laughs> i do have several guitar hero controllers <laughs> so uh, that uh, that felt really targeted uh and uh that, was there really any need for that that's i'm that's so I've, I, I don't, within I, the last year gone on ebay looking for like <laughs> looking for guitar Astrid hero i don't even all. have guitar hero anymore Ast Astrid has <laughs> yeah i just bought them all i just bought them all yeah you're stockpiling mm. for you know yep. <laughs> driving up the value i think you like um, the to be as diamond yeah cartel, i don't have but a bed for, uh... i just i just <laughs> i have <laughs> I an interest have in like potentially limited edition things like that where i feel like guitar hero controllers are one of those things that are not really going to exist very much anymore until some random company is like Hey, you know what would be really cool if we made like USB, but really high quality, you know, using r rubber, I don't know, whatever high quality materials to make Ooh. some, uh, some. <laughs> it's made of rubber so you can slap people yeah. with your guitar. <laughs> you, yeah. uh, you need um, the Resident Evil 4. The old ones are really <laughs> plasticky, you know. Yeah. Um, mm, mm. I mean, it feels like that's going to happen because, like, Guitar Hero and Rock Band and like the the sort of uh, the sort of modded uh, like like fan made versions of those games are fucking yeah. huge on Twitch still. Uh, I was going to say for me, I didn't really have that kind of rivalry in the same way. I, th I remember playing like you know we had our Perfect Darks and our Golden Eyes and even back to the Super Nintendo, but it was always very much an RPG household. You know, it's how my dad established us. It's how we stayed. Not really, my dad. My dad played showed us Monkey <laughs> Island. I think he was the first. You one came to show home us. with a uh, a copy of uh, FIFA t uh, like twelve once, yeah. and they were like, "Get that! This is not a." <laughs> it's like the Monty <laughs> Python minor house. sketch. Like I'm gonna play FIFA someday. Get out of this house! You'll never do that here. Um, so yeah, we played a lot of uh, RPGs and stuff, and I think I have a similar experience to Alex of like all my memories of that kind of stuff. First of all, it's just talk about like winter slash holiday slash any kind of comfort food gaming stuff. Like I remember in multiple traumatic periods of my life, there's a time when I was living in Chicago and I just woke up one day and I had some time off and I, from like Monday through Wednesday, I just beat Chrono Trigger. Like I just woke up and was like, I'm going to play Chrono Trigger until the end. And I've done that a million times. And me and my brother would do a lot of, you know, Final Fantasy VI, Chrono Trigger, just all these kind of, even watching him play Fallout 1, and stuff like that. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Steal the bottle caps from the guy. Kill the mutant. You know, shit like that was our... It was a much more kind of like... <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say collaborative because we fought a lot. But maybe like uh, coexisting <laughs> in the same space. Did you ever play Secret of Mana with them? You know what? He's such Something a little shit. Actually, He's like, such a little shit <laughs> because we never played that. And I'm always, I always regret that. Like we never actually played any of the two player RPGs. It was like one player RPG and the other person watches or nothing. And now I look back, I'm like, why didn't we do that? It doesn't make sense. You know, did anybody play the, like, remaster of... I feel like I played it on the DS, which was not really the... Did it come out? I, I think there was a, just a port mm -hmm. on the DS, yeah. but they, like, redid the graphics, like, la last year? Yeah, or yeah, a year yeah, two, yeah. Maybe two years ago? Um, we'll it do it. It just looks terrible. Mm -hmm. It looks like a mobile game. Yeah. The the whole remake, I don't know if it was a remaster or remake of the Secret of Mana, but they basically got rid of like all the thing that Secret of Mana have known for, the beautiful pixel art that is like probably hand hand drawn with uh uh in a console or something, all gone. It's all just like low poly mobile type graphics. It's really sad. They did they tweetify it? They tweeted yeah, it. Yeah, that's like, true. Uh, teary eyes. <laughs> Come to think of it, Harvest Moon is a good example as well. I actually distinctly remember playing Harvest Moon in the winter time, and and really liking that it was winter in the game too. Being like, oh yeah, this is the synergy. This is the true synergy. <laughs> this is um, how I feel about like games that are so coded as being very cold and very wintry. I have a difficult time playing mm -hmm. in a season that isn't that. Like, um, I really like The Long Dark, which um, has gotten a resurgence recently because it was on sale, and I feel like it's it's complete in a way that it hasn't been. Mm -hmm. I think they're they're either done with it or very like close to being done, um, and so a lot of people are playing it now for the first time. And I've I've loved it since it came out, but um, I can't do it during the summer because I like 
the whole purpose of the game is it's about just spending as long as you possibly can alive in a frozen wilderness. And if you try and play it at the heat of summer, it just tonally feels inconsistent. It's like now that it's the temperature's dropping a little bit, like being able to feel the cold in my hands while I'm desperately trying to search for something to keep myself warm is like <laughs> yeah. utterly essential to playing that game correctly, as far as I'm concerned. Cool. Check it out. It's on Steam. I will do. There you go. Yeah, I have a similar experience with that um, of like uh, like not being able to really play some games that like at least like have predominantly cold sections in them um, unless it is like cold at the time. Uh, I have only ever started playthroughs of Fable Two um, during the winter time because I and I don't know I don't know if it's specifically um, coded at the beginning there to be sort of a Christmassy it's Dickensian, period absolutely but, yeah. like mm, it it's just it's so Dickensian so Dickensian um, like everything covered in snow and uh, people shivering Sad. and like that that sort of the, the vibe. Um, like, it's just like, I always feel that compulsion to, to go back to, to bow a stone, uh, in its best iteration, in my personal opinion. There is something um, about, like, Victorian England, which just, it feels cold. It, like, it never, it depictions of it never happen in summer. <laughs> During the heat wave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, man, this is why I love Russian, you know, the old Russians. They're just like, ah, I'm in a cabin. Everything's freezing. There's no food for miles. There's wolves barking at the door. It's, it's <laughs> like July. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I'm going to try and go back and play Frostpunk in the winter. I did, yes, this when is I what made me think about this, because I did this recently. Yeah, it doesn't work. When I played work it in, the summer, in the summer, I just, I didn't. And that's the only time I've played it. I didn't. I, you were too happy. Really care for. It. I mean, it was fine. Like I didn't dislike it, but it's just like this is. I guess it's okay. A lot of people really like that game, but what's the, what is, is Frostpunk recent? Maybe it was the weather. Uh, it's about two thousand eighteen. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Why. Give us some setup for us non it's like Frostpunkers a very, in chat. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of a city builder, but uh, colony sim. I guess basically okay. like it's post-apocalypse, right? The mm -hmm. world is world is frozen over and. Uh, you have to rebuild um rebuild a colony and it's it's kind of cool because it's you're rebuilding concentrically because your heat management is maybe the biggest thing that you have to worry about because like temperatures are negative 100 celsius or whatever mm -hmm. and so all the resources you're gathering are basically to make sure you can keep the heat going keep the furnace going and keep the heat spreading to to fulfill your your little city and there's an engine in the direct middle of the map and you're spreading outwards to right. collect resources to get it so you want to build homes very close to the engine to begin with but as your city develops the people on the outskirts of it are going to be cold so you mm -hmm. need to find a way to put like industry and stuff like that that will be burning hot mm -hmm. close to houses that are further Is this and like further you're out building Midgar and something? you have to make Kind of, yeah, yeah, but like in a world that has already been destroyed yeah, by yeah. climate change. It's a very, op it has a very oppressive feeling to it. Yeah. Like when playing it, and it purposely, like yeah. it's you are meant to feel hopeless and lost in your, like in your challenge of trying to rebuild this thing. And I mean, it gets a, it gets a feeling right. I think where I kind of fell off of it was just maybe like the writing of some of the, of the challenges because they try and fit not a narrative of your city, but just sort of of like the, the the tribulations that your people are going through and sometimes it just felt a little try hard i don't know it happy really... holidays <laughs> yeah, come, but it's a very yeah, comforting yeah. game nothing, <laughs> nothing like nothing like civil unrest it really... no, no, nothing nothing like a no, nothing like a game that either ends in theocracy or fascism yeah. for the holidays exactly. right it's like the, the <laughs> totally appropriate season, yeah i uh looking yeah. forward to january 1st <laughs> i actually just started playing uh, um, wintermore tactics club i brought it up in another episode but um it's, hey that's got winter in the title i know and you know what? I was realizing there was something about it was just striking the right mood. And I don't think the season is the only reason, but I think it's a factor because I was playing it and it's so cozy. It's it's also takes place in a boarding school. It's like a tactical RPG that takes place in a boarding school. And it's very cute and very like nice. And you're a bunch of kids who play a game called Curses and Catacombs, which is definitely not Dungeons and Dragons, but it is. And you are just trying to you have to do snowball fights and like save the school and all this crap. But it's so like the whole game is like everyone's wearing jackets. There's like when they breathe, there's like it's animated and there's like cold breath coming out. And I do find my, you know, this time of year, it's been a while since I've been able to go back to the States. And I, I used to, my mom's side of the family lives in the north of New York, like close to the border with Canada and Buffalo. 
So it was like the kind of snow we experienced up there is like literally like higher than like the the windows sometimes. So there's there's something about playing it that feels <laughs> wow. very familiar. And yeah, I will I'll report back to you if I I'll, I'll try playing with some hot cocoa and I'll let you know if I if I get more immersed. <laughs> you're <laughs> nice. You're reminding nice. me as well. One of the um Final Fantasy Tactics games <clears throat> on the Game Boy Advance yeah. starts with like being in a boarding school and playing a snowball yep, fight. Yep. Yeah, and the like, whole game starts that from that, that and then it's like in your imagination or something, which is weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just get hit with a snowball too yeah. hard. <laughs> <You're just laughs> All of a sudden, there's chocobos everywhere. You've got to save the world. <laughs> <laughs> kind of tangentially going back to sports for a minute. Uh, has anyone here played Snowboard Kids? I've No, but I've thought about it a lot. <sighs> It's 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 Mario Kart, but better. Honestly, that's like my. my that's what everybody says about Mario Kart. Games. It's better than Mario <laughs> Kart. You're a bunch of kids, and you have yeah. snowboards, um, blue shells, and there's a cool. Uh, that I don't think there are blue shells. I don't think there are blue shells. But you can fire bomb. You can fire parachutes at people that f throw them up into the air. That's pretty cool. Um, there's an announce that like some of the levels have giant snowmen that shoot. Um, shoot things at you that turn you into a snowman, which means you can't mm -hmm. move. Uh, that's festive. Um, and um, it, when you pick up power ups, you have to you have to spend the coins that you've picked up during the race to get them. Otherwise, you just slam into the power up, and then the cool sort of the cool kid announcer says, "Not enough." That's great. It's, <laughs> it's I'm, just the I'm best actually thing ever. pretty. So there's snowboard kids too as well. Radical. Yeah. Uh, I've never played Snowboard Kids 2. I cannot attest to the quality of that game, but the the OG Snowboard Kids on the Nintendo 64. Yeah. Has anybody amazing. noticed that Very the, festive. the one thing that anybody will ever describe another like kart racer style game is that it's quote unquote actually better than Mario Kart? Yeah. Well, Every single one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the standard yeah, with it's which the... it's so <laughs> almost by the illusion it's not. <laughs> Does that make yeah? Th another one hasn't overtaken it as the standard, <laughs> and yet it's the it's the thing everybody it's says. The dark about souls it. of Mario Crash Kart Team Kart Racing games. is actually yeah. better than you know. It's you know it's actually <laughs> much better than Mario. Kart. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what is that? Simpsons hit and run. You mm. know it's actually it's better than oh. Mario Kart. <laughs> but see, the, the, the thing about the sim thing about Simpsons hit and run is that it's more like a it's more like a Simpsons GTA. Simulator, yeah, that's true. Right? This like, is just driving just like in a, it. A, yeah. This just <laughs> you're, now you're now but you're like, sounding like drive. a boomer, Alex. You're like, hey, you know your Mario Kart game the over races. there. Simpsons the thing that I remember about it are the races that, like, I guess you would sign up for in like GTA style. I'm anyway. a total boomer. Yeah. So I remember when the Game Boy Advance came out and there wasn't a Mario Kart game, uh, but there was a Konami Races, and everybody bought it, and it's it's pretty fucking good. But it wouldn't have sold any copies had there been a Mario Kart that there was, was out the at Mario the time Kart launch. Game, wasn't there? and Mario. It didn't come out at launch. It okay. wasn't a launch game. It Super was very circuit, close, but it wasn't. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's take a break. <laughs> So, so we were just talking about wintry things. So, wintry levels in games. Oh, I thought you meant like a like a gingerbread latte. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Christmas until the red cups show up. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> That's the reason for the season, sister. <laughs> holidays are coming. Holidays are coming. <laughs> I love it here. <laughs> I think Shay was going somewhere with this. Somewhere. Uh, let's see if we end up there. Um, so wintry, snowy levels in games. Mm -hmm. Have you got any favorites? I've got, I've got you two. just singing a song? I've got two right off the bat. <gasps> a whole two. Two right off the bat. No, the first one, I was trying to test uh, Alex P's uh, musical recall skills during the break, and unfortunately he failed. So the first one is Freeze Easy Peak, Banjo-Kazooie. Classic. Man, I've spent mm. so many because I used to bring the N64 to, to my grandma's house in Buffalo. So I actually specifically remember the synergy riding on that giant snowman 
while there was snow outside, number one. Number two, uh, winters, the whole uh, Jeff's kind of area in Earthbound, Mother 2. Alex, I know you know what I'm talking about now. Come on. Don't tell me you don't know that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I was still thinking about Banjo-Kazooie uh, <laughs> because here's a little confessional. Never played it. Oh, my God. God, dude. Give me a game of cards. I, I can't even. When it came. <laughs> my yeah, but for some reason, uh, I, you know, it it's really different for it. you, Matt, because and Alex has this pretense of being like comprehensive with playing games. So Alex is playing every game. <laughs> yeah, you will. Uh, yeah, I just, I think it came out at a point where I didn't like bears. <laughs> <laughs> and now look at you. <laughs> and now, okay, you know what? This could be taken in a totally different direction. <laughs> I don't know if this is a family-friendly <laughs> show or not. <laughs> now I'm really into bears. Dream Daddy, I love that game. Come on. <laughs> um, Do you guys have any yeah, wintery I don't know. levels just one of those... I want to hear more about why you didn't like bears. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why yeah, I never played it. From that. I, feel like this is... I played Donkey Kong 64 to completion, 100% of that. No snow and, in that game. Uh, really, everyone that says that's just the shit version of Banjo-Kazooie. So. Whoa. Yeah. I didn't say it. I said everyone else says that. That is. I have love for DK sixty so four, so despite rude. its flaws. I have. Yeah, love I remember it. it. I have. I have fond memories yeah. of that game. I don't know why it gets trashed. I mean, yeah, and it's also become an important. It's become exactly. an important chapter in the rich his, uh, the the rich history of <laughs> of trans rights, it's which true. is it does have a chapter um, in that book. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyone else? Come on, children. It Enjoy also us. has a good rap song at the start. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Pave the way for good rap songs. And isn't there a winter level in Donkey Kong sixty four? There, there might be, but I don't remember it as like well as I do. Sure, be, surely they go to a mountain. Oh my god! Or and Banjo Kazooie has the freaking ice. click clock wood, which is the last level with the four seasons. So you get to see it in spring, fall, you know, summer, winter, and also an amazing winter section and brilliant level design. Banjo Kazooie hitting you twice with winter levels. That's three examples. Booyah. Does the Hoth level in Lego Star Wars yeah. count? Shadows of the Empire as well. Yeah, that totally counts. That's mine. Oh, Shadows of the Empire. There okay. We go. Yeah, no, that's that's my pick. Any and all scenes on Hoth yeah. in Shadow of the Empire. There go. Tremendous. Stunning. How, how do we feel about what, Matt? Uh, Banjo Kazooie, Nuts and Bolts. <laughs> Anybody had Nuts and Bolts? No, defender? I haven't. I have no strong feelings about Banjo Kazooie. Actually, don't Banjo like or Kazooie. <laughs> I love it, by the way. Before. Not, not. A, I, I think if we're if we're measuring it on a metric of good Banjo Kazooie games, it's not oh, that because it's not really doesn't fit the the, the Banjo Kazooie no. game. <laughs> yeah, doesn't fit the brief. But in, as a yeah. game on its own, like oh yeah, I want to put I want to put the bits together to make a car and then drive yeah. car at a fast. This is good. Were, yeah. were there earlier versions of the sort of buddy platformer? Like after Banjo Kazooie, there is whatever Jack and Dexter, Ratchet Jack and, and Dexter, Ratchet Yeah, I can't and think of two yeah. lads hanging out. Why do you repeat what I do? Speaking <laughs> out loud. I can't think of a game where two lads hanging out was the yeah. the main theme. For, well, I guess Sonic and Tails. Yeah. Maybe that's the. With, so yeah, that would have been like ninety four, I think. Any any old uh, any old beat him up when you've got a second player, I guess. Like Streets of Rage. Yeah, it's not quite it's not the, in same, the name of the right? game. Hanging out. It's not quite the same though. Yeah, it's not quite the same. Well, um, this is a bit of a stretch, but um, fuck. Crash Bandicoot Twin Sanity. That was a thing. It was later okay. than yeah. That would have been. Though. Oh, you think? Right. Oh, you, I'm trying to think yeah. what predates Banjo right. Kazooie as the well, buddy. I don't know. I think I they were think... kind of the pioneers, right? Because like mascot platforms. Sonic and Tails is maybe the closest. Yeah. Thanks. That's the question for the listeners this week. What predates Banjo? Kazooie. There's pre Banjo and post Banjo <laughs> is the point. So Yeah, go go out viewers and do So what you need to Google what you need to Google is bear themed <laughs> games, okay? And like I love bears and things like that and just see what it comes up. Buddy buddy bears uh bears bird on fun. top of bear yeah. bears just having like, fun throw all of those search terms into google like 30 times and then the algorithm will just yeah. like give you what you collect need to see. a bear collect a if farm. you get a like a teddy bear for christmas and it looks a little deflated you could search for like bear stuffing <laughs> oh my god yeah <laughs> right, let's stuffing. move on <laughs> <laughs> oh dear um highbrow video games criticism <laughs> 
<laughs> it's holiday I've special. Given, I've given my examples. I'm I'm over here. I'm just shooting out. You know, well, got Banjo Kazooie. We've got. I Winters. brought up Twin Sanity because I played a lot of very mediocre games on my Xbox uh, mm. that I won for being good at my sats. <laughs> um, Call and <laughs> callback. Uh, we do those here. Yeah, they, there's a pretty good winter level. I think the best thing about that game was the music. It had very good music, but not much of anything else. <laughs> Specifically Twin Sanity, or are yeah. you talking just Crash? Oh my god, the Crash games were so hard. I didn't I didn't get past the first level, so not those. <laughs> but Twin Sanity, yes. Very good winter level, if you could get past the bugs. Very good music. Is Twin Sanity a platformer, or is it a spin-off? It's a platformer, and you play as both at the same time, and they've oh, okay. got like different abilities. The guy with the big head has very specific things that he can do. do you Doctor Neo Cortex, yeah. guy with big head. Yeah, <laughs> I remember sometimes games magazines would come with um, strategy guides that were written by the team, um, and I remember reading one for Crash Bandicoot Three, which was a game that I didn't have. I had Crash Bandicoot Two. But I remember trying to use the tricks that I'd learned in the Crash Bandicoot 3 manual. And it's saying stuff like, oh, use the um, the grenade launcher that launches the fruit at these specific ones. And I'm like, I can't find the button for that in Crash Bandicoot 2. Like, how do I? Back when the strategy guide was like your Bible. Yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, Final Fantasy yeah, VI, Narsh, one. Chrono Trigger, the future, both snowy places. I'm just I'm spitballing here, folks. <laughs> you know, mm. I forgot that Narsh was a place, and I so thought that good. you had just coined a term yeah. for something like gnarly. Like <laughs> totally Narsh, Narsh bro. <laughs> it was like a Jay and Silent Bob situation. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, that game opens up with the wind and like the snow blizzard and stuff. That is what gets you. You know, when you're climbing up in the Magitek armor. Classic. How do you feel about those iPad um, remakes? Don't even mention uh, they're they're like what you said about the <laughs> other games. Like that's a heresy. They shouldn't even exist. So this has to be sort of within the context of a of a level, right? Like, are we going all the way to open world open world uh, areas Skyrim? or? Well, my question is because the most like, like a zone in a similar way of Matt, you know, only wanted to play the long dark. Uh, when Matt's hands are cold and like feeling, feeling, feeling that a, a game that I've played that actually I did play sort of in the summer and it still made me feel cold uh, when I would go into go into like the cold areas of the map, like the mountainous regions and and the frozen areas is Kenshi, which I've talked about before. But oh yeah, you mentioned that game is something that writes a lot of checks on its atmosphere that it can cash and the like the immersion that you get uh from what you're like trying to accomplish in, in your run or whatever is is really great but it's really well exemplified by just basically two things it's just the art style and the music and the art style feels like a almost like a near impressionism film um but then still in color and then the music is it kind of, you're going to hate this when I say this, Shay, but it's, it's, you know, the music in breath of the wild, you can't, there's not really a song you can pick off, pick out from it. It's almost ambient. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's just, you know, an occasional like piano trill here and there that just kind of, I don't know, gives depth to where, what you're doing and where you're going, but from a completely atmospheric perspective i mean i really love the music in breath of the wild but i could never you know sing you the tune of of any of the levels or anything like that and it's like that but sort of like uh synthesizers <laughs> you know um i didn't hate that really for the record cool. well it's so just i know you, you hate it when me. i say the, the words breath of the wild <laughs> you don't know me um <laughs> like i mean the point besides the obvious theme of like a winter level any of these things is that like we've said the, the oppressive atmosphere the feeling of being overwhelmed things that you normally can see being obstructed. Like I was even thinking the original Silent Hill, I think a lot of it takes place in this like fog. I mean, it's, it's old hardware, so they can't render it very well, but it's like foggy, snowy streets and the monsters are coming at you from behind the, you know, the fog of war or whatever. So when it's used right, it seems like it can, it's either super cute like Banjo-Kazooie or it's like really, really disturbing and kind of like ominous, but it, in either case it allows for, yeah. Or it's some, it's a mix of the two, like something I've been getting into um, later on uh, now that I'm able to sort of comprehend how to do it is uh, custom oh, yeah. Doom levels. 
um and uh there are lots of great christmas ones there's one i played <laughs> where um the grenade launcher gets replaced with yeah, a giant maybe. candy cane that <laughs> fires exploding baubles um and nothing beats chainsawing santa in half it's it's it's, it's great it, uh, with like fun little festive jingly music playing. i was gonna say does the conversion just make a e1m1 but it's like played with sleigh bells you know <laughs> Yeah, yeah, basically, basically, it's like, yeah, they just, they've just, they've just sprinkled some Christmas on top of Doom, uh, which is perfect, perfect in every way, exactly like Christmas in real life. <laughs> Sprinkle of Doom. <laughs> winter levels, amazing soundtracks. Another winter from the uh, Scott Pilgrim game. Oh, just a fucking banger. I never played is it. it. Isn't That's it great. being re-released? You know, it is. Yeah, January. Uh, this yeah january so you recommend sure. re-release remastered what is mm -hmm. it uh so for whatever reason it was just stuck on the xbox 360 for mm. ages um there were so many rights holders like universal had a hand in it ubisoft had a hand in it um the creator didn't really have a say and mm. neither did the people that made the soundtrack and th there's all been just a very large fan push to get it actually no trademark mm. up and out always helping us to make mm, sure we yeah. get our products it, <laughs> it was a real like trademark deadlock more than yeah. anything like nobody benefited from it just being stuck mm. on this old console and yet nobody could figure out the way to get it out which just the way of things unfortunately well, i'm glad they figured it out somehow yeah um, so they can benefit this uh, is, entire is company great. of uh <laughs> sex pests that's the <laughs> <laughs> great timing. Yeah. So what you know, is it a beat em up or what is game it? I really like. Yeah, it's like a screech it's like a screech of rage. Screech from saved by the bell exactly. on the streets just yep. fucking shit up. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of renowned sex pests. I was going to say yeah. was he's was a, he's a bad guy. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can see it. <laughs> Speaking of something. Uh-huh. Guilty pleasures, isn't it? Saved by like, the bell. <laughs> yeah. and, now, and now we can't cut that segment <laughs> <laughs> oh dear um yeah do you have any that you play around this time of year i um i realize that my taste in games is actually pretty mediocre and so i like to deep deep dive into stuff like bayonetta around this time of year also because it's the only game that my sister actually likes and is kind of good at so <laughs> i just like watching her play through it it's quite endearing it's a game to watch isn't it mm -hmm. very flashy campy yeah. goodness I still maintain that. Everyone said it was bad when I was working at HMV, and I was like, "No, don't this people is a good secretly game. love it? Doesn't it have like a cult following?" Good with an asterisk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bayonet's people big. love Bayonetta mm -hmm. too, don't they? Bayonetta two, right? Yeah. yeah. So you are somebody who has more affinity to for Bayonetta, the first the one. The first one, too. indeed. I'm a Bayonetta purist. That's my thing. I'm gonna say it. I think that playing that game makes me uncomfortable. Just there's a <laughs> lot of flashing Sorry. legs and. <laughs> It's just the truth. I'm sorry. Like <laughs> her hair being her clothes, I what? feel like it's a game I can't play when my wife is in the same room. <laughs> oh my God. I know somebody who does a uh, bayonetta burlesque routine, which, come to think about it, is kind of on the nose, isn't it? It's like, oh yeah, I'm doing a burlesque routine of this hypersexualized character. Yeah. It's, like, it's far more. It makes more sense if you did one of like, Pichu, right? <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> that. <Bowsette. laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh no. So actually, you don't know how correct you are because she also does a pause. <laughs> uh, the internet made it fucky. We've had this conversation before. You don't really believe in guilty pleasures, do you? Yeah, kind. Yeah, yeah all pleasures I don't. are valid. Thank you. Yeah. Kitten, you you were going to say put, that? We put spoke it all about in my, this. Put in my mouth. <laughs> I wanted that to happen organically so that I could be like, I fucking told you um, that you prompted. Alex. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. um, yeah. I just I I'm a firm. I'm a firm believer that there's not a uh, there's not a difference between best and favorite or greatest and and what you like. It's what what you like is the best to you, and that's what you know. That's what's important, and you shouldn't. I don't think that anything that you take pleasure in is anything you should feel guilty for. Otherwise, we're just talking about shaming, right? Oh, so if I tell you that I prefer the Marvel movies to the John Cassavetes entire canon, you're that's fine. That's your that. steez, man. Yeah, it's just you doing you. That's you I have doing a feeling you. that you are just. Back. You're just you're just saying that off cra off camera. No, I have opinions about what I like, about what I enjoy, <laughs> and what I think and a reasonable human with my an time. intelligence and an IQ. Like, love five I'm not going to watch those movies. <laughs> I'm not going to watch those movies with you. I'm not going to waste. <laughs> it's okay. My I, time. I just devil's advocate. I don't. <laughs> like. uh, no, but I, it's really all all art is valid art, and it's yeah. it 
everything is there to like to challenge you and build a greater pool of of art and i've said before that i also think like playing and experiencing or watching uh stuff that you don't like is just as important as watching stuff or sure. playing things that you do like because it gives value and perspective to that stuff that you do like and you understand why you like it w- what about the whole um pl- but I, I take what i think about is more because I, I think you're right and conceptually yeah guilty pleasure is kind of a funny concept like that but also there are games which i know i don't like like almost objectively i don't have fun but i still play them yeah. Like I always joke about the JRPG <laughs> thing, but like legitimately there's something that is comforting to me about the feedback loop of starting a new RPG, putting my character name in and grinding. And even if the game is as bad and I don't like it, I will, st- I will still play. <laughs> so there's an aspect. Yeah. That's not a guilty pleasure, mate. That's just massive. Well, but in the sense that? of like, uh, you have, <laughs> you have a problem. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, maybe like I do set myself up for that, you know? This like, is an intervention. <laughs> yeah, like my we friend was telling me for to ages to, to play Breath of the Wild, which I, I liked and he, he knew I'd like. But I was too busy. I don't know what I was playing. It was another one of these like, yeah, but have you heard of this? They just translated this ROM of this like Japanese RPG. And, you know, it's not <laughs> that good, but it's new. <laughs> you can look forward to our uh, Cyberpunk 2077 review that will be hitting yeah. uh, later on this month. <laughs> you could reframe that- the question, couldn't you, as... um widely accepted to be not great mm. but you love it but that you like yeah yeah but that's a mouthful yeah. no one wants to say all those words <laughs> guilty pleasure in it yeah. yeah what's the what's the general consensus on the uh xbox 360 video game viva Binata? it's had like a resurgence in criticism <laughs> it's a right? game you but can like, play i don't know it's in fine. terms of it when it came out i don't know if it had that wide renown right i uh, it's great love it to bits um uh and i guess like back when back when i um believed that there were guilty pleasures when i was a a less a a less virtuous person (laughs) 30 um, seconds ago i'd put that in in that that camp i think people have a misconception (laughs) that viva pinata is about like collecting a bunch of animals and then have them all having a good time when it's really not it's a out for blood (laughs) like dog eat dog absolute hell it's colorful david attenborough simulator Mm. Uh, I've never it's, played it's it. Great. What is uh, it? It's like what is the actual? What do you do? Uh, your granddad died or something, and now you have his garden in P- Pinata Land. And the whole the whole aim of the game is to is to sort of cultivate this little garden, um, buy various things from um, strange people in the village who will wear pinata masks. Um, and try and get these little pinata animals to move into your garden uh which largely consists of oh i need to get this little worm boy in here so that i can like feed him to this bird uh as a sacrifice uh, and they all have like they all have like uh candy themed pun names based on the animals that they it's are like monster rancher it's, it's sickly sweet no um, I think monster rancher was more slime about rancher. Uh, it's slime kind of rancher. Like yeah, slime. quite a lot like slime well no because i think that mm. the specifics of slime rancher are like you don't have to have specific slimes to be able to unlock mm. other slimes do you i haven't played it either i okay. just i know what that game is about though but there's also weird weird stuff in viva pinata like there's like there is almost like a that, that there is a sinister sort of undertone to it. I don't think anything ever comes to fruition, but it does feel a little bit strange. Uh, and there are like slightly messed up things. Like if you set a moth pinata on fire, it turns into a different kind of pinata, <laughs> which just feels like encourage. It's encouraging you, you to your, commit horrible acts of violence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. You get it's great. I love it. By, Sometimes it snows. You get currency by hitting some of your pinatas with your shovel. Because you know okay. they've got candy inside. So <laughs> every time, yeah. every time I yeah. hear the name Viva Pinata, I immediately think that people are talking about Samba de Amigo. Samba de Amigo and classic. Yeah, and it always, um, it always Good throws me again. for a loop. Is it? I'm doing the uh, speech concept called <laughs> sarcasm. <laughs> 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 so, what's a game that people hate that you love then? that a lot of people hate or dislike or think is bad that you are like no no actually so it's the the annoying thing is now that like the internet's more of a thing yeah. it's another cult classic but at the time everyone hated it dragon age 2 i was like this is 
not this is getting a really rough beating okay. and it mm-hmm. doesn't deserve it that much i'm gonna have to take off my belt <laughs> so what um what can you tell like, me about dragon age because i literally don't know anything about it <laughs> oh yeah you've literally you're the bioware rpgs you're just so yeah after yeah so era, yeah. removed from them yeah mm-hmm. um it's, I was going to say, it's the sequel to the first one. So the thing is, it's <laughs> like Dragon Age 1. That's almost a damning one. thing to say about it if you don't like it. It's like, it's the sequel to the first one. Because basically, it, it doesn't really have like a lot of the characters that were in the first one. And where the first game took place like across like an entire land, this game just takes place in one city. And like they reuse a lot of the same dungeons. So everyone was like, oh, this is proper like rushed and stuff. But what I liked was because they didn't spend time like, you know, making this big sprawling land, you just had these very focused stories about certain characters and, you know, spending what, like 30 hours with them, like, you know, I sort of grew to care about them. Some of their stories are quite compa- compelling, even. I do wish that, because uh, I haven't played it, but I think mm-hmm. some of the design principles are really interesting. Like, I wish that massive video games like this, that are your huge RPGs, would spend mm-hmm. a little bit less time in scope and more mm-hmm. time in fine tuning. Mm-hmm. Not that that's at all relevant to some of the, one of the really big releases that came out recently. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple, actually, <laughs> if you think about it. Uh-uh. <laughs> Even Watch Dogs, you know. That's yeah, like one yeah of the that thing Matt's got a chip about. on his shoulder. It's fucking bad, lads. It's <laughs> bad. <laughs> I mean, that's been a thing, right? Like, people have been talking about how do we, like, restrain the open world creep by, like, trying to actually reduce mm. the scope rather than constantly expand it. And that was one of the really good things is that they just zoomed in on this little shitty little city and you had all these big things kind of going on in the background and they mm. were just kind of, like, fodder for the rest of these stories to be told, which I find much more interesting than... You know, see a bloated it. I mean, 65 hour long the reason that i've shit fest. fell off mm-hmm. of it very not i don't want to say quickly i think i gave it a fair due mm-hmm. i think was that the um the art style of it became very jarring to me because i played it immediately after origins mm-hmm. which i felt like had a really glossy is the wrong word but it, i felt it kind of popped and there was the right amount of color mm-hmm. like there was it was a very kind of grim world very you know mid, i mean almost traditional medieval stuff but i thought that you meant it popped because it was on the unreal engine 3 <laughs> <laughs> um shut up <laughs> uh it was it it looked like a very um considered aesthetic uh that it wasn't just it wasn't just generic medieval fantasy um and a lot of that was just like the, I guess the balance of the colors almost. And I immediately went into Dragon Age Two, and a it almost looks like it came out before Dragon Age Origins, yeah. and everything was this was also kind of at the height of that gray brownification of of AAA games, and I I almost like that was a, almost a wall for me because then it meant that I, if I couldn't if I couldn't at the like the most base guttural level get invested in it because I was like being pushed away by the aesthetics. I couldn't then invest in like the characters that I was so used to seeing so vibrant and everything. Mm-hmm. There's a little dog in it. There is a little dog. Um, it's quite ugly though. Yeah. Best <laughs> friend. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, jeez. You know what's nice it is is, uh, it's true. is winter places and games that actually uh, have an effect on you. Like a game that I know Shay doesn't like that much, but Breath of the Wild. Like when you go there <laughs> and you don't have the right equipment, you shiver, right? That's a cool yeah. mechanic. Yeah. Mm. You shiver. It's not even just and that... And then you just um, fucking die. Yeah. Not even just it's really cool. that it's a cool mechanic, but it presents you with options for solving it. Like if it's yeah. dipping your health down, then prepare by getting a lot of food or get we'll some get warmer right clothing yeah. or constantly make some fire, which yeah. I think that that's really interesting because one of the first things, one of the first places that you go to, so it automatically presents you with design uh, sorry, with challenges that are only informed by design, it's real cool. And that it, it's a game that's like about intersecting systems, so mm-hmm. it's very good at explaining that that's a game about intersecting systems through mm. play. Breath of the Wild, pretty good. For you. I also want to live in a world <laughs> where I want to live in a world where um, you can like just down seven bowls of spicy curry and not get <laughs> or like or yet. someone's punching you and you're getting injured, and then you just kind of like shove some like steak in your mouth. 
while they're doing I that. I love and that just... shit in games. Me like, too. It's so good. And like Streets yeah. of Rage, you eat an entire turkey <laughs> <laughs> to refill your health in the middle What's, of a brawl. It's like, it's like the unspoken. It's like the unspoken implication in Skyrim, where like you just be standing in the middle of a village, and then like everyone around you will just watch you and see like thirty Stop. wheels of cheese. You know Stop. what? You're eating too much. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah. Isn't that the most? holiday season uh, activity of all consuming cheese consuming yes. way too much Four wheels and then of regaining your health food. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what that's what christmas is all about other holidays <laughs> as, as well other, uh, other just, holidays are available <laughs> So Alex, you think about things a lot. You got a lot of thoughts about a That's lot of things. What it says on your business card. Yeah. I don't prompt. I don't prompt Shay to do this. By the way, for the record, during the break, Alex is like, "Here's how we're gonna bring this." I in. got some this wacky is, opinions. This is not. And I need you to give me a way to unload them. I'm coming into this out of that break. So tell us about your opinions. Talk to Alex. me. Yeah, talk to about, me about, about your, about your opinions. opinions. What makes Wait a game? <laughs> What makes what a makes comfort a game, game a comfort game? Yeah. In in I two minutes or that less, too. that's your prompt. Go, go. <laughs> I want to know that too because I'm th if I think about the games that I feel like I most um, I dive into isn't right, but get get lost into. I guess like when you're 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 playing the game and shit, it's already four a.m. Mm -hmm. I feel like that is my kind of comfort game, and I'm not. I'm not, I haven't really been sure maybe why, but I do find those are almost always the most satisfying games as well. Almost whether or not I really love them or like them. They're just the games that I feel like maybe help me help my brain process things. Uh, kind of like dreams maybe, right? Like not the game dreams, but dreams are supposed to help your brain just like get defrag, compartmentalize everything that happened in the day. This is Alex's uh, like 1995 like educational video <laughs> about dreams. Defragmentation like, is still a thing like, on hard drives. Dreams help your brain defrag. Defragging is when you are um, when your Windows machine is running slowly. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a point. I feel like for me, yeah. I feel like for me, uh, comfort games um, are. It's when I sit down and like i'm playing the game and i go wow this is really comforting <laughs> astute observation <laughs> you know in games when um you have the option to like skip time forward a little bit right like there's a mission that you can only do when it's night time or, mm. or such and such for me mm. the option to do that is video games if I'm sat down at like nine in the morning and I don't have anything to do until nine p.m., mm -hmm. just play a little video oh, game for a little while. Like that is what that's for. It is. I need my brain to just be in a different mm. time, and I don't have anything that else I need to do. So, yeah. exactly. That's yeah. exactly it. I yeah. think it's really interesting, though, mm -hmm. that that concept. But like for me, I almost get. I maybe because I don't have a ton of free time with like just job job stuff and and a daughter and family and stuff like that and so i feel like i almost have to regiment my my free time very effectively and efficiently and i get almost i get like anxiety if i feel like i've wasted my free time mm -hmm. yeah. and it it bothers me i don't want to have that anxiety but like i i need i feel like i need to have an outlet outside of everything else in my life that is pretty much a hundred percent filled by film and games um i mean music kind of just this throughout the day right this is a much like more passive thing but like with how does it affect you now when you play something that you're not especially interested in does it feel like you're being robbed of that no i'd rather time? i would rather be playing a game i don't like than scrolling through reddit or twitter or whatever mm -hmm. like those <laughs> things to me like it happens because you're whatever laying around and sitting through something else but i would rather be engaging with a shit thing of of a thing that i'm passionate about 
than a something to me that just feels so like mm. liquid. I if guess. you've spent four hours just reading Reddit and you've had a like arguably pretty good time, I would feel the same mm -hmm. as it'd feel like a hangover. Mm -hmm. It feels like I just <laughs> ate a shitty like. That's how I feel when I play kebab. too many video games, man. Interesting. <laughs> I. But you feel like you did something more meaningful, even if you didn't actually spend the time enjoying it. If I, if I, it's yeah, very Protestant. It's because I, I don't know. It's like something where I've, I've Protestant built up. Ethic, I feel folks. like I've built up my perspective of something that I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. Where, like, if I watched, if I took it an entire day and just watched three or four movies that I ended up hating or disliking, I would still find that to be a productive day, like a day well spent. So I'm, I take the total opposite tack of that. <laughs> It, it, the, the reason that I'm like, oh, I read some really good posts today, and I had a, I have a story about it, right? Like, yeah, I, I just I don't know. It's I guess it's it's the thing that I'm, you know, most passionate about. These things that are the most passionate about. So those are the things that fill my soul up. I guess even if even if I don't particularly think they're good. Even if, I thought you were gonna say even if I don't have a soul. I thought that's where you were going with that. You know, like, <laughs> I fill my soul up even if I don't really have a soul. Hmm. Where a soul would be. <laughs> Passionate about posting is like yeah. the most corporate sounding. Mm. It's my, like, it's my motto. It's my mantra. Thing. It's your motto. It's what I you're, get passionate up about. In the morning. you're passionate about poggers posting. I wake up yeah. in the morning, my head leaves my pillow, and I say, Time for another day of passionate posting. Comfort games for some people are going to be stuff that is like not going to remind them of the holidays. We were talking that a little bit in the break, like people who want to get away mm, from it. Yeah. For some people, I mean, basically it has to be any experience which ha is renewable, you know, like that. Maybe you can replay something that is exactly the same story beats every single time. But even an adventure game, like the ones we were trying to get Shay to like, um, even when you play them and they have the same story beats, like you still kind of can move around them, talk to people in whatever order you want, try different puzzles, try them different ways sometimes, like anything that is renewable means you can kind of endlessly dive back in and re-experience it. So like for me, there's certain games like you could say that about a game like undertale, but for me, like undertale was a very special experience that I kind of only want to have once. And I don't feel the need to like yes, ever I... play it ever again. And there's a not game, other games, which is not like that. So for me that the, the comfort thing has to, there has to be some renewable, like every time I play Chrono Trigger, I'm like, what different party am I going to use or what different equipment am I going to use? And, you know, then there's the memories aspect of like, it, you know, like we talked about at the beginning, it reminds you of your brother, it reminds you of this time. Like, I haven't seen my brother physically in like nearly a decade because he lives in Japan. So it's this is like my way of kind of rekindling these things. So. And I do regret playing a bad game, Alex, 100 <laughs> <laughs> percent. Whatever blows your hair back. Yeah, I really re I really regret playing Greedful. Um, I think that's the one game that I have there. Uh, but otherwise, I agree. Yeah. No regrets, people. Um, this is holiday special. Experience. <laughs> one regret, but <laughs> that's pretend, your tattoo. Cut it out. Yeah. Cut it out. One the regret. Tattoo. No, it's, uh, <laughs> it's the meme of the like one regret. The guy with the T-shirt on. <laughs> no fear. Yeah. One, one fear. fear. <laughs> uh, yeah. But that's scary. <laughs> So that was a nice vibey conversation about some comforting games and some festive habits that we had and just, you know, reminiscing, you know, a real fluffy episode. Um, if you're enjoying our content here on YouTube, please make sure you like and subscribe. Give us a comment as well, because that's always nice. We like chatting to you a lot. Um, you can also email us at community at glasshouse.games or tweet us at GHG show. Um, you can also listen on your favorite podcasting app is great thanks to technology thanks to my panelists for being great and you know banterific or something <laughs> i didn't need effect. the portmanteau of banter and terrific but <laughs> well now you've got it so <laughs> that's my stop gift having for terrific season. banter man you're welcome um <laughs> thanks to kit for making the show happen as always you're no longer wonderful and thanks to <laughs> dancy parks for the music um if you're enjoying our content and feel so inclined please support us on patreon that would be really lovely and great especially for the christmas period like and subscribe to the video if you feel like it all i want for christmas is patreon good night everybody